background to the MDGs, where we stand, in the case of Tanzania, plus the way forward. How did they come about? In the year, in the year 2000, at the UN in New York, the presidents of different countries set a time frame, had an agreement to set a time frame for measurable goals and targets to be able to manage poverty, hunger, disease, illiteracy, environmental degradation, and gender inequality. Since then, the eight goals have formed the heart of global development agenda. We are going to look briefly at where we, I mean, what the targets were and where we stand. The first one was to eradicate extreme hunger and poverty. And according to the reports of 2013, um, maybe we should go through the targets we are supposed to have. Uh, between 1990 and 2015, the proportion of people whose income is less than $1 per day, but we are also to achieve full and productive employment and decent work for all, including women and young people who are usually overlooked, but also to have between 1990 and 2015 proportion of people who suffer from hunger. Um, the report for 2013 tells us that the world has reached the poverty reduction target. That's what is, uh, we're told when we're in New York in March at the UN, but also the people living on less than US dollar 0.25 a day fell from 47% in 1990 to 22% by 2010. However, employment in gender gaps still persists. MDG2 was supposed to achieve universal primary education, and the target was to ensure that by 2015, children everywhere, girls, boys, will be able to complete full course in primary education. In many countries outside maybe the Western countries, children don't have to go up to secondary school. Um, so where do we stand? We are told that the enrollment, this is 2013, in primary education in developing regions reached 90% in 2011 and up to 82% in 1999. Girls, unfortunately, are more likely to be out of school than boys, especially in poor countries because they are required to do domestic chores. So this lowers their entry into secondary school. MDG3 was supposed to promote gender equality and empower women. This is an overaching gender equality goal, which encompasses parity in education, political participation, economic empowerment, and actually global health may not be achieved if there's no equality in, in gender. The target was to eliminate gender disparity in primary and secondary education, preferably by 2005, and all levels of education no later by 2015. What we have now is that 40 out of 40, 100 wage earning jobs in non-agricultural sector are held by women. So you see women are mainly in the agricultural sector. And women form only 21.8% of parliamentarians, up to 20% in 1997. So we still need to see more women uh, given opportunities. Um, Next was to reduce child mortality. This is MDG4. The target was to reduce by two thirds between 1990 and 2015 the under five mortality. And now the mortality rate for children under five dropped by 41% from 85 deaths per 1,000 live births in 1990 to 48 in 2012. Uh, physiologically, boys are less likely to survive than girls. I think you know this. We don't want to go into details. And then five was to improve maternal health. The target was to reduce by three quarters the maternal mortality ratio and achieve universal access to reproductive health. Globally, the maternal mortality ratio declined by 47% over the past two decades from 400 maternal deaths per 100,000 live births in 1990 to 210 in 2010. However, meeting this target will require more investments, investments from the national governments. MDG6, which is our main target, which is to combat HIV, AIDS, malaria, and other diseases, 
The target was to halt and begin to reverse the spread of HIV AIDS by 2015, achieve by 2010 universal access to treatment for HIV and AIDS for all who need it, halt and begin to reverse by 2015 and in the incidence of malaria and other major diseases. Where are we? Sorry, this is a bit long. The HIV and AIDS incidence has been declining in most regions by 33% since 2001, but the number of women living with HIV has been increasing, and I think you know why. In 2012, 290,000 fewer children under 15 were infected than in 2001, and we know that HIV has been a leading cause of death for women of reproductive age all over the world. And we are told that every minute a young woman, 15 to 24, is infected with HIV and 50% higher risk of infection compared to male peers due to a complex of interplay of factors. There has been low economic and low social status in many countries which make women and girls disadvantaged. They are more vulnerable, they can't negotiate safer sex, and the access to HIV prevention and education is also a challenge. In 2012, some 9.7 million people in low and middle income countries were accessing antiretroviral treatment, an increase of 20% in year one, in one year, sorry, and in 10 years, 1.1 million malaria deaths were averted. This, they fell by 26%. TB treatment has saved, we have been hearing about TB and malaria, it has saved 20 million lives in 1995 to 2011. TB deaths also have decreased by 41%. MDG6, what else can we say? Global HIV and AIDS epidemic is one of the greatest threats to human existence and development. Prevention, education, and antiretroviral are well spread in the world. The trend varies per country. Some countries are much ahead and others are still struggling. Sex, I mean, it varies per country, region, sex, age. So there's differential response according to the, the, you know, the economic well-being of countries. So, Sub-Saharan Africa, as you have seen, has 71% of people living with HIV, followed by Eastern Europe and Central Asia. By 2010, we had 95 million people who had tested uh, globally, probably the much more now. Um, there have been increased investment in malaria, and we can see the positive trends. Environmental sustainability, I think we all know that we are supposed to, to the targets were to integrate the principles of sustainable development into country policies and programs to reverse the loss of environmental resources. This is another big problem of the world. And to reduce the, by, uh, by half the proportion of people without sustainable access to safe and drinking water. The situation is global emissions of carbon dioxide have increased, very unfortunate, by 46%. And the global emissions demand, uh, demands, uh, you know, the, containing, uh, the growth in global emissions demands bold, coordinated national and international action. Um, efforts are ongoing to strengthen national mitigation efforts. Number eight, global partnership, which is very, very essential. Uh, where we stand in 2012, there have been some ODA, the Official Development Assistance, which is working hard to, to make countries of the world take responsibility. There have been some critics, which I'm not going to, to talk about. Tanzania has embraced the MDGs within the national poverty monitoring system since 2001. There have been some achievements, especially in primary education access, access to safe water, and reduction in child mortality. But more efforts are needed to reduce maternal mortality. Um, that's, maybe there's no time. I just wanted to show you where we, we, we are from. And also, the, in blue, you can see the prevalence rate in Tanzania is 5.1% for age group of 15 to 49 years. And uh, that was in 2012. It went down from 7% in 2003, 2004. But for women in Tanzania, the prevalence is still high. It, it went down from, I mean, it is 6.2, and for men, 3.8. The HIV prevalence is higher in urban areas than in rural areas. I think you can understand there's more interaction in urban areas. And malaria prevalence among the children under five years is 9%. So Tanzania has been having a roadmap of care and support services 
from 2004, and that's why the poor boy I introduced at the beginning could not access medication because the rollout for antiretroviral didn't start until 2004. And the target was to reach 44,000 patients, but by December 2007, the number has gone up to 135, 696 patients. And um, in July, 2007, our president made a, launched a campaign of testing, massive testing, and he was the first one to undergo a test, and this increased the number. Uh, and today, more than three million people have tested, and they know their zero status. What have been the drivers of the epidemic in Tanzania? Yes, um, promiscuous sexual behavior, especially men, due to cultural beliefs. Men in Africa think that they can have more than one wife. I mean, this is acceptable in the community. Inadequate comprehensive knowledge on HIV transmission, socioeconomic and political and gender, inequal gender inequalities, including violence against women, most women and men and girls uh, you know, are violated, have their rights by violated through rape, through you know, marital rape and all sorts of, of uh, violence. Substance abuse, especially alcoholism, widow inheritance, we still have that, and cleansing, meaning that if a husband dies, the brother-in-law could, could sleep with the, the widow to cleanse her. And that's one of the, maybe the husband died of HIV and, and this other husband will get the, the infection. Mobility, separation of spouses, people most of the time, husbands and wives do not stay together. If the husband is working, the wife stays in the village. And then there, there's a development of temporary sexual relationships which uh, spread the virus. So we want to say that progress towards achieving the MDGs has been mixed. A gender equality perspective will facilitate attaining the goals. This is a path towards achieving other goals. Um, Partnering for success is also a requirement for zero initiatives. I think you know about this. The zero initiative means that, for MDG6, means zero new HIV infection, zero discrimination, zero HIV-related deaths. This should be the goal of the world. If all, if at all, the way has to live with the reality by celebrating achievements of the MDGs, it must be women, girls, children, men, celebrating together. Only then we can talk of realizing the UN agreement set in 2000 at the UN headquarters. Short of that, if you have very few people celebrating, the MDGs would have become a failure. Thank you.